Thank you. Well, at this time, I'm going to bring the word. I would like to see if, Grandma, if you would pray over the word real quick. Amen. Well, for starters, I'd like to say I love the Lord, and he has a funny sense of humor. I was just thinking right now as I was listening to the songs that my wife and I about a year ago were saying we need to get into Wednesday night service to support the church. Well, we procrastinated, procrastinated, but guess what? We're here. <laughs> I thought I would be out there watching up here, but I'm up here watching you beautiful people. So the Lord does have a funny sense of humor. He does do what he say he's going to do. He wanted us here on Wednesdays. Well, guess what? We are here. Amen, Teresa? <laughs> yeah, my team. We're a team, you know. So this evening I want to talk about changing your circumstances. Amen? A lot of us deal with circumstances in the world that we don't agree with but we deal with them. They don't feel right, but we go through them, amen? Well, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to. You can change these circumstances, amen? Every day we run into situations and in absolute circumstances the world or the enemy has for us, amen? Most of the time, we don't agree or want to accept these, especially for our lives, for our families. We don't like what the outcome will be because obviously we can see it. Most people can if they open their eyes. Amen? We know a situation's bad when the end of the outcome will either A, hurt us, B, mentally hurt us, or C, cause so much turmoils in our lives that we can't see straight. Amen? Well, I'm here to tell you that if you don't like it and you don't like what you see, you don't like what you feel, then let's change it. Amen? We can change it, church, through prayer. Amen? Church, let us change our circumstances. Don't accept them. Don't accept the ones that the world or the enemy has for you, church. Amen? Why? Because we don't have to. If we don't like what we see or feel, let's change it. Amen? Amen? Whether you need a change in finances or you need a change in, say, protection from the enemy and you want to be protected and you don't feel you are, then change it, church. If you just want to cast out fear and doubt from your mind, from your life, from your situation, change it. Pray about it. Amen? Let us pray and change our outcome because all things are possible with God. Amen? Yes, all things are possible through Christ Jesus. We must call on the authority given to us through Christ Jesus to cast out fear. Amen? To cast out all the powers of the enemy from our lives, from our minds, and from our families. Amen? We have this authority given to us by our Lord. We have these abilities. Let's read about them. In the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus is saying, Behold, I give, you, give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. Amen. This scripture, our Lord is giving us power. Amen? He's giving us what? Power over any situation the enemy can bring to you. Amen? That's what our Lord said, and our Lord cannot lie. He gives us power over the scorpions, power over the serpents, power over all the enemy has 
for you in this world. Amen? We can change it, church. He just gave us the authority in these scriptures. The scriptures give us the power over the enemy and his powers in this world. Let us believe and execute this authority of power and fight the enemy. Let's fight him from our lives through Christ Jesus. Amen? We can fight this fight, church. We don't have to accept the circumstances that we see. Let's change them. Let's call on the name of the Lord. He gave us power and authority. Let's use it. Let's execute it. Amen? Let us not be attacked by the enemy freely. Let's just not lay there and die. No. Let us not lay there and have the enemy attack us day in and day out, our minds, our bodies, our families, and anything we touch. Let's not. Amen? Let's not freely let the enemy attack us. Let us defend ourselves. Amen? The scripture just said you have the power. So let's use it, church. Fight the fight, church. Amen? You have the power given to you by our Lord, and our Lord said that nothing shall hurt you. And our Lord cannot lie. So if the Lord said, by nothing by any means shall hurt you, and that you have the power over all that the enemy has, then I believe him, church. Amen? I do believe him. Because our Lord cannot lie. Let us fight the enemy with power and authority given to us by Christ Jesus. Amen? Let us not accept fear and doubt. Let us rebuke it. Let us stand up to it in the name of Jesus and cast it out. Amen? In the book of Mark, let's see, chapter 1, verses 23 through 26, let us read. And there was a synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Amen? And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Amen? When our Lord walked into a room with evil spirits, they saw and knew who Jesus was. Amen? And all Jesus said was, hold thy peace and come out. Amen? We've... We are given through Christ Jesus this same ability, this same authority over the enemy. Amen? How come we don't use it? Let us use it. Let us stand on these promises and gifts our Lord gave us. Let us stand up to the enemy and walk in, not angry. Did Jesus walk in angry? No. Did Jesus walk in with a baseball bat, with guns? No. Jesus walked in and told them, Hold thy peace. But he spoke it with authority, church, as the Son of God, as they recognized who he was. We have this ability. We have this authority given to us in Luke 10, 19. I just read it. Let us execute this in our life and rebuke doubt and fear and all the powers of the enemy. Amen? We can change our situations. Let us call on our Lord and have courage to stand on our faith, amen, and change our lives through Christ Jesus. We believe in prayer, amen. This is why we all call each other in times of need, of times of doubt, in times of fear, or sometimes just for guidance. We call each other, amen. We pray together because our Lord says it's stronger and more powerful and heard by our Father in heaven. Amen? We gather two or more in Jesus' name because our Lord says it works. And our Lord can't lie. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 18 through 20, we read, 
Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done from that for them by my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. These are the instructions given to us by our Lord. Amen. We know how to pray. We know how to get results. Let's execute these things, church. We have the ability. We have them. Let's do it. Let's show the enemy that we're not afraid of him. Let's show the enemy that we know how to fight. Let's show the enemy that we're not going to accept the circumstances that this world or he has for us. Amen? So we gather, so we gather the people together. We gather our friends. We gather our family in prayer. We gather the prayer warriors to come together in prayer because we need to change some of these situations we face, amen? Whether it's Yolanda's situation or Marilee's situation or Leon's or Joe's or even Jane's or even Gotcha's. We come together as a church. We come together not as one because our Lord said we're two or more. We come together in two or more. He sent them out in pairs into the world. By two, he sent the 70 out two by two. Amen? So why? And they had results. Why, why don't we have results? We can, church. So we come into agreement with two or more. Why? Because there's power in numbers. We will not accept what we see or feel in our circumstances. We're not going to accept it, church. Don't. Especially... When it's a bad outcome. When it, amen, or a hurtful outcome for someone that we know. Let's not accept it. Let's change it. And we can change it through prayer, church. Let's change it. Let us come together in groups of two or more and ask for a different outcome. Or for the feelings of doubt, for the feelings of fear to leave your house, your situation, your life, your mind. We will not accept doubt and fear. Amen? Let us leave it. Let's invite that spirit of peace. Amen? Let's bring peace to our situations. Let's bring peace to our mind. Let's bring peace to our families, to our homes, to our friends. Let's invite them to know Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. Amen? We do not want fear and doubt. We want it to leave. So we invite the good spirits of peace. <coughs> Excuse me. If we sincerely believe with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds, it will be done by our Father in heaven. Amen? This is our power given to us by Christ Jesus. Let us learn how to properly fight the enemy. Let us get rid of of these bad circumstances. Let us pray for better ones. Amen? Let us pray that fear and doubt, let us pray fear and doubt out of our lives. We have no place for it. We don't, church. Especially when we can do this by the authority given to us and with numbers in prayer. We can rebuke these things from our lives. We don't have to let doubt and fear dominate our lives we don't we can have the joy of the lord we can have the peace of the lord but first we have to invite him in to our lives our minds we have to set ourselves in his path we have to watch his way and live the jesus way and all these things will be done to you amen you have these powers given to you our lord gives us specific instructions and instruments to battle all these principalities and powers. Amen? Because it may look and feel like the world is attacking you or that person is attacking you, but us as Christians, we know better. Amen? 
we know that it's the spirit within them, within them. It's the evil one within them manipulating them to attack us, manipulating them to give us fear. But we're not going to accept this church. We're not. Amen? Let's see. If it looks and feels like the world's attacking you, it is. But in reality, it's the spirit within them. In Ephesians 6, let's read 10 through 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is what we fight, church. Amen? Yes, be strong in the Lord. Have faith in him. And have faith in his might, church. His mighty power, because he is stronger than all of us. He is stronger than the devil. Remember that. Remember, our Lord beheld Satan fall to the earth as a bolt of lightning, burning. Remember that. He's a defeated foe, church. And our Lord watched him be defeated, watched him cast out. He's nobody. Let us not let the devil dictate our lives, how we feel, what we see, and how we act. Amen? So don't fear the enemy. Like I said, he is a defeated foe. Don't let him rule over you. We don't have to let fear and doubt control our lives or our minds. Amen? We need to bring peace to our lives, our situations. We need peace in our minds. But we can do this only through Christ Jesus. Amen? The peace to know that through his name, that name of Jesus, that we can stand strong in his might and fight the enemy through his name and have courage to go forward. Amen? For those who wait on the Lord will find strength of heart and will be of good courage. Amen? In Psalms 27, 14, we read, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen? Who needs strength of heart? Who needs courage? Amen? You find that with our Lord. Amen? Who needs a strengthening of heart? I know I do. I know I do. And I wait on him. Why? Because he will strengthen my heart. He will guide my path and strengthen our situation. Amen. Church, do you believe in angels? Amen. They protect us. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Well, I believe that the greatest angel of all protects you. And that's our Lord Jesus. The greatest. And he protects you, your situation. Call on his name. Call on his name in your situation. Call on his name for strength. He will protect you. He will help you fight these fights. I know. I've called on his name in a fight before. And it, was, it wasn't that person, and I could tell it was the enemy. But I rebuked that man in the name of Jesus, and he couldn't stand to it. He could not stand to that name. And that man came the next day and testified to me that when I called on that name of Jesus that name above every other name, he couldn't fight against it. And that man came to apologize to me. Why? Because I called on the name of our Lord. Amen. It's a very powerful name, church. It's the most powerful name I know of. Amen. And now we have comfort knowing we have power and authority. We have that authority. Also, he gave us direction on what to do and who we fight. So let us believe and execute the gifts God gave us and change our situations, for we know we fight principalities and powers. We just read it. He just told us it. And our Lord can't lie. 
Amen? We know that prayer can change the end result. Amen? We don't have to accept the circumstances the enemy or the world has for us. We don't. We can get together with another believer or a lot of believers and pray in Jesus' name and fight all these principalities and powers for reals and change our lives. Amen? The enemy attacks you. He attacks you for reals. Let us bring the fight to him on his terms. Amen? Let us call on the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. And let us fight and change our outcome. Even if the outcome is death, and death is in the room, Jesus can change the outcome. Amen? We've seen Jesus change the outcome when Lazarus was gone. And he wept. Why? Because that was his friend. Amen? Jesus was a man. He had feelings. And I believe that. And he wept and he changed that situation. Now, I'm going to tell you about a situation that my granddaughter was in. And she was born not breathing. With an umbilical cord wrapped around, not breathing at all. In the delivery room. Okay? So, death was in the room. Amen? But my wife knew the instructions that she'd been taught. She grabbed everybody's hand and started praying in tongues. She dropped to her knees and she called on the name of the Lord in that delivery room. Amen? She called on the name of the Lord. She gathered more than one person together. She dropped to her knees and called upon our Lord and Savior my, my granddaughter wasn't breathing. But we gathered everyone together in prayer in the delivery room, and she started to pray in tongues. And she started to call upon the name of the Lord. And my granddaughter started breathing. We did not accept what the world had for us or the enemy was showing us. We changed the circumstances through prayer. Amen. My granddaughter is in kindergarten now. She runs, she plays, she laughs. She's very, very happy young lady. And she's going to be a wonderful woman. But if my wife wouldn't have called on her Lord at that moment in time and made everybody come together at that moment in time, we would not have seen the miracle that our Lord can bring us and change our circumstances. But now we do see it. We did see it. We do feel it. And we talk to her every day. Amen? Let's give the Lord a clap offering, please. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. Thank you for all your wonderful blessings. But we came into agreement. We changed the circumstances through Jesus' name. And God got all the glory. Amen? All the glory belongs to our Lord. Amen. Our Lord heard our prayers. He heard us call his name. And we blessed his name. Amen. And a miracle happened. An answer to prayer when it was done correctly. Amen. And my granddaughter started to breathe. And like I said, she's in kindergarten. And she drives me crazy. But she is alive, church. She is alive. And well, but my wife's prayers changed the outcome, church. It really works. Use prayer to change the outcome, church. Change what the enemy is trying to do to you. Amen. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> uh, I've watched my grandson turn purple before. He has seizures. Stop breathing, purple. I've jumped in my car. I've done 100 miles an hour down Arrow Boulevard running every red light trying to get my grandson to the hospital. And the whole time, my wife and I are praying and praying. She's prayed for that young man more than once, and she's changed his situation because the enemy can't have him. 
He's ours. Amen. He is a child of God. And we will call on our, our Lord every single time. And every time we'll be thankful when he blesses us with breath and life. Amen. Church, pray. Prayer is one of the greatest and strongest gifts God gave us. Amen. Let us use the prayer to change these situations and these chaotic things in our lives, these things we deal with. Let us not accept what the enemy has for us. Amen. We rebuke fear. We rebuke doubt. We rebuke anything that is not of God or good in our lives. Amen. And that the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Oh, amen. Thank you, church. Amen. Grandma, would you close in a word of prayer, please? Okay, let's come together in prayer for Yolanda this day. God as she goes through this surgery that it will be successful yes Lord yes Lord Oh, yes, thank you. Well, this, this is a good service for you then. <laughs> Amen. Yes, ma'am. Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy that you heal in this precious ser sermon that we heard tonight. Had so much of your faith uh, in it, the, the faith that you've written in your word, and we stand on every single word that Pastor Ray gave us tonight. Yes. We're going to believe you no matter what the circumstances look like. We thank you because you have blessed us and you will continue. And for Yolanda, you're going to be with her uh, through all of this and bring her back victorious and free from sickness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. That was wonderful. That was a wonderful prayer. At this time, you are dismissed. Thank you. <laughs>